Reik Machar says he's more than happy to meet President Salva Kiir, but he's denied all knowledge of planned talks in Khartoum. Veteran Kenyan politician Raila Odinga has been mooted as a likely mediator for the face-to-face -face meeting. Odinga met Kiir two weeks ago and is expected to meet Machar in South Africa this week. The latest proposed talks follow failed IGAD efforts to revive the 2015 peace deal in Addis Ababa last month. Well, to get more insight on the development around the South Sudan peace process, we are joined by Peter Bibabaya Ajak, Chairman of the South Sudan Young Leaders Forum. Thank you very much for uh, coming in. What do you make of this gesture by Rik Mashar? Um, does it inspire confidence, do you think, that the pr peace process is actually headed somewhere? Well, I don't know if the peace process is headed anywhere or not at all. Uh, but of course, there is interest for Riek Machar to want to meet with Salva Kiir because uh, for some time now, Riek Machar has been under house arrest in South Africa. So he doesn't have freedom of movement. He can't travel in the movement, uh, in the region, I mean, in the Riga region or anywhere at all. He has just been in South Africa. So if he agrees to meet with Salva Kiir, uh, this could be his ticket outside, out, out of this confinement. So this is a big motivation for him. Uh, and of course, uh, if he come and meet with Salva Kiir and Salva Kiir is willing to receive him back, then there is his potential again to come back to South Sudan and become a vice president again and see if he can work with Salva Kiir. And this is really the question. Can Riek Machar and Salva Kiir work together? And we don't know if that is really the case. What, what do you think? Are they likely to be able to work together? Well, the history has shown that they can't work together because the problem is uh, Salva Kiir is not prepared to see Riek Machar to succeed him as president. And this is for all sort of reason that dates back to the history of the liberation movement in the SPLM. Uh, because as many people know, uh, Riek Machar defected from the rebel movement in 1991. Uh, and he, he, he created his own uh, breakaway faction. Uh, and after that, uh, a lot of atrocities were committed on both sides. And the SPLM, the main uh, rebel movement, lost a lot of ground due to actions of Riek Machar. And many people in the mainstream SPLM has never forgiven Riyak Machar uh, for that, including Salva Kiir. So even if he come back and his ambition is to become president, uh, I don't think this deal is going to work. Okay, let's talk a bit about this planned Khartoum uh, talks. Um, uh, I mean, how effective are they likely to be, especially since we had the IGA talks recently, and then of course we had the subsequent United Nations Security Council uh, meeting, uh, basically saying that um, you know, giving it to the end of the month, if you can't get your heads together, we'll get, we'll impose sanctions again. So, how effective then are these talks in Khartoum likely to be? Bearing that in mind. Well, we don't know. First of all, we don't know whether the talks will actually take place in Khartoum or Addis or in Mauritania, uh, because all these locations have been mentioned now in one way or another. And what we are seeing is a, a scramble by regional leaders to be the one that deliver the South Sudan peace process. Uh, you saw Raila Odinga uh, went to Juba. Now you, Bashir is sending out this gesture. Museveni could be was a, there a last month. a possible mediator. He's been Not, muted uh, as a mediator. Possibly, but the point here is there is a, there's a, all of these regional countries are trying to be the one that deliver this peace. Uh, so we will see whether the talks will take place. The good thing is the talk will take place. But the question is whether the, these talks will deliver anything. And then what happened afterwards? Suppose now Riek Machar is no longer confined to South Africa and is able to travel around in the regions. Uh, maybe he can get back to the areas that are controlled by his troops, and you could see like a surge again in violence and all sort of things. So this is a big uh, risky move uh, by the region to let them meet, because the question is, will Riek agree to go back to South Africa afterwards? Mm. And why would he come out of South Africa if only to meet for a meeting that may not deliver anything? So what do you think then is needed to ensure that South Sudan is able to end this four-year-old conflict? Well, the problem in South Sudan is people are so, so much dependent on leaders doing the right thing. But most of the time, and what we realize in this region is uh, leaders don't choose to do the right thing. And the question becomes, when the leaders decide to act opportunistically, what happens? And you have a population that is not organized. You don't have political uh, parties that have any sort of ideologies. And I think this is the main challenge for South Sudan, is that 
Should they allow themselves to depend on their leaders so much? Should they allow the security of their children and women to depend on leaders so much? And I think what is needed really is for the people to organize themselves. And once they are organized, because power is something that exists within numbers, and if people are organized, they will be able to tell the government, this is what we want to be done. And that way, they will be able to have power over their leaders. For now, it's the leaders that have the power over them. They don't have any real say. And the leaders don't want to do the right thing, because each one of them is acting opportunistically. And only one person could be president at the time. So you can't have Riyak Machar and Salva Kiir president at the time, or co-president, or anything of, the, of this sort. So, can, and, and, and as long as they don't agree, there will always be conflict. So you need people to come together, build consensus, and agree on what kind of country do they want to create. And this is something that can be done by ordinary South Sudanese without even the involvement of the leaders. And I believe our people can do it, because this is what precisely we did to attain our independence. OK, so you say the people need to organize themselves. Thank you very much for your analysis. That was very insightful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. That was uh, Peter Bayar Ajak there chairman of the South Sudan Young Leaders Forum. Thank you very much for coming in.